chapter, chapter 4. Meeting Twilight. Sob story ensues. Dash and I left Fluttershy's property and were making our way down a beaten dirt path that led to Ponyville. When the town was in relative sight, I turned to Dash and asked, Should I really just be walking through the middle of town like this? I don't want to scare any, but I mean Pony. Don't worry about it, Cole. There's a side path up ahead we can take that'll move us around Ponyville and put us, put us near Twilight's house. If there's any pony around, I'll just cause a distraction to give you enough time to slip inside. Won't Twilight be scared of me like Fluttershy? <laughs> nah. Uh, I have a friend here I would need you to meet. After a couple moments, I could hear the clip-clop of hooves on wood heading downstairs. Rainbow? What is on your mind? And what do you mean I need to meet this friend of yours? Not that I'm against the idea, it's just that you sound so serious. Yeah, Twilight is kind of a long story, but I feel I need to warn you right now. This friend of mine is a really nice guy, but he is just very different. Oh, it's a Colt. I didn't think you got along with Colts all that well, Rainbow. What is that supposed to mean? Are you trying to call me a Philly fooler? No, I'm not. I was just... Uh, never mind. Will you two come out now? How am I supposed to meet this friend of yours if you're hiding from me? Um, Twilight, I finally chimed in. Dashie wasn't kidding about when she said that I'm different. Before I come out, I want you to promise me that you won't freak out. Dashie? Twilight started to giggle. I didn't know you two had that kind of relationship. Dash just groaned. But I'm sure that whatever you look like can't be all that bad. I promise I won't freak out. Alright, Twilight. Here goes nothing. I step around the bookcase that divides the front door to the main floor. Before I can even make it fully around the corner, I hear Twilight gasp and fall over. I look at her to find a mixed look of what I assume to be shock, terror, and curiosity. What? Uh, what, what are you? Twilight, please, calm down. I'm a human, from Earth. I was brought to this world by a, I don't know what, and I promise you that I'm harmless. I would never hurt any pony. Twilight seemed to calm down a little after my introduction. Dash trotted over to her and helped her up, laughing a little. That's what you get for making fun of me, Twilight. I wasn't making fun of you, Rainbow. I was just having some fun with you. I know, Twilight. But that doesn't mean seeing you freak like that wasn't fun for me. <laughs> they both shared a warm laugh for a minute or so before turning their attention back to me. Well, you already know that I'm Twilight Sparkle. What is your name? My name is Cole. It is a pleasure to meet you, Twilight. I walked over to her and extended my hand as he would for a handshake. She understood the gesture and gave me her hoof. It was weird shaking hands, hooves, whatever, but it didn't make it any less enjoyable. Fucking hand for this bitch ass. So, Cole, you said that you don't know how you got here? No, I don't. I was driving home from work last night when I must have run a red light and was hit by a truck. I honestly shouldn't even be alive right now. Why do I make all these horrible comments to these sweet ponies? Dash and Twilight had a genuine look of concern on their faces upon hearing this. But after a moment, Twilight's face lit up like she had just had an epiphany. I don't know what all that means, but you said last night? At what time would you say it was? Well, I usually get out of the store by about 10 after 10 p.m. I had only been driving for a minute when the accident happened, so it was anywhere from 10.10 to 10.15, I would guess. Twilight looked like she was holding back the world's biggest freak out. It was like someone had just won the lottery and found out that their home and everything they'd ever owned burnt down. It was a weird look. Twilight, what does the time matter? You're kind of missing the big point of the story. Cole says he should be dead, and you're worried about the time? Why? Dash exclaimed. Because, Rainbow, last night I cast that spell I'd been working on all this time. The spell was supposed to bring me an object from another world so that I could study it. Cole must be the object I summoned. Well, at least that answers that question, I chimed in. Oh, Cole, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to bring you here like this. I'm sure you want to get back home as soon as possible. I'll get to work right away on finding a way to send you back. There isn't any need for that, Twilight. I want to stay here if it's all the same with you. God no, only knows how many times I have freaked out these ponies today, and only he knows how many more times that will happen. My guess? Well, at this rate, I would put it somewhere in the 11th digit location. Give or take a couple thousand times. So yeah, 
Stupid jokes aside, they look shocked. Again. <laughs> what do you mean you want to stay here? Don't you have a home to go back to? Twilight asks with a hint of concern in her voice. Yes and no, Twilight. Dashy, this is the big news that I told you about earlier. I think you ladies need to take a seat, because this is going to take a while. They both looked at each other and then looked back at me. I'm sure they had a million questions, but to my relief, they silently sat down and looked at me intently. First off, girls, I need you two to understand that I'm completely sane. A lot of them I'm about to say won't make a lot of sense. I just need you to both to understand that there is simply no proper explanation and is what it is. They both nodded. Good. Well, the truth is that I've never got along in my world very well. I've always been pretty introverted and openly disapproving of the way people in my world behave. There are plenty of wonderful people where I'm from, but they are not the norm. For as long as I can remember, I have always had trouble trusting people. Probably because when I was a young child, I was exposed to some really nasty things that I won't get into. I'd like to say it didn't leave any emotional damage, but I would be a liar. Anyway, I grew up basically doing anything and everything wrong. On the outside, I looked like any normal child, but on the inside, I was full of all sorts of negative emotions. I managed to overcome most of my problems before my teenage years, but I couldn't get over my angst. I used to get sad and cry to make myself feel better, but that is a sign of weakness. So I changed those feelings into anger as I got older. I would see people and instantly hate them for being nothing more than a person. I was a stupid kid. I was like that for a solid three years. By the time I was 16, I had gone over my unnatural hate and now only had to deal with my depression. You see, at the time I didn't have any friends, nor did I have what people would call a lover. All I had in the world were my parents and my dog. There are some people who don't even have that. I really should have been more appreciative of what I had, but I wasn't. At this point in time, I didn't even want friends or a lover. I used to have friends, but as we got older, we always drifted apart. As for a lover, which I guess I should just call a girlfriend, didn't appeal to me either. At this point in my people's history, the divorce rate is very high. People only want got together because they wanted sex, or just anybody to be with. That's it. Plain and simple, they only wanted the physical pleasure of a relationship and company. I didn't care about that. I wanted to find a lover who could also be my best friend. I wanted someone who could hold and be held back. I wanted love. I didn't think it was asking too much. But I guess it was because I never found it. I couldn't stand the girls around me. They were also selfish and hateful. They were immature and nasty. They were foul-mouthed and dishonest. I take a deep breath and calm myself. Letting all of this out felt good, but really hurt to say. So to summarize, I didn't want friends or a relationship because I couldn't trust or bring myself to like anyone. For a few years, I was simply content. I didn't want anything out of life, and life didn't ask anything of me. I went day by day doing the same things, again and again. I was okay with that. However, the day came when I learned what I wanted in life, but it was something I could never have. I had given up all hope of ever finding love at this point, and all I wanted in life was an equal. Someone that I could be there for, and they would be there for me. I wanted a family of my own. But not willing to give up on my standards for the sake of just having someone, I didn't want just anyone. I wanted someone who would sincerely love me the way I would love them. What brought on these feelings? I can't tell you, girls yet, but I can tell you that it left me very confused. <sighs> I spent the next five months getting slowly and slowly more and more depressed. I was no longer content. I was just sad, plain and simple. I was lonely and there was no cure. There's basically where I was emotionally when you brought me here, Twilight. I didn't have anything to live for back on Earth, except maybe for my parents, but I can't live my whole life for them. I love them for being the only ones who stand by me, but I can never confide in them. They honestly have no idea I've been feeling this way, basically all of my life. If there is a way to let them know that I'm safe, then I would like to do that. But I won't go back to Earth. I simply refuse to. Each word was weighing heavily on my heart. I never told anyone any of this, and yet I'm telling two ponies I just met. 
I feel like I can do well here. I feel like I can be happy here and maybe one day start a family. I don't care if I have to adopt, but for once in my life, I have hope. Hope that I can make something more out of myself than just being a complete loser. And that is basically my story. Sorry I took as long as I did. I hope you girls don't think too poorly of me now. I started trailing off as I looked up at their faces. They both had tears streaming down like you wouldn't believe. I was honestly at a loss for words. Not only did I make two ponies that I would die for cry, but they were crying for, for me. I didn't know if I should be happy or sad. Cole, that, that is the saddest thing I've ever heard, Twilight choked out. I'm so sorry. Of course you can stay here. I just wouldn't wish those feelings on the biggest jerk Equestria has to offer. Dash didn't say anything. She just stood up and trotted out of the library. She didn't look at me or Twilight. She just left. I hope Dashie doesn't hate me now. I doubt it, Cole. She just doesn't like any pony to see her cry. And that was a very sad story. I'm curious, though. How can you say all that and not cry at least a little yourself? <laughs> there has only been one thing in my life that has been capable of making me cry. I don't have any more tears to shed for myself. I honestly hate myself more than anything or anyone. I've made so many bad decisions in my life. I just need to make the right one now by staying here. Cole, you shouldn't hate yourself. I know we just met, but you don't seem bad to me. I promised Dashie that I wouldn't do this, but I don't think I can help it anymore. I walked over to Twilight and sat down right next to her. She looked at me with a little fear in her eyes, not sure as to what I was about to do. I brought her into an embrace. It wasn't like with Fluttershy. I wasn't holding her to make her feel better. I was doing it to make myself feel better. She didn't fight it though. She was definitely surprised and even gasped a little when I pulled her in. After a moment, she returned the jester with a gentle, almost nurturing hug. At the time, I didn't know how old they were, but I felt like such a pathetic fool for being comforted by what I assumed to be just a child. After a few minutes, I forced myself to let go. I could have gone on forever, but I didn't want to make Twilight get uncomfortable. Thanks for that, Twilight. I'm sorry that I came out of nowhere. Hugs like that have always made me feel better when I'm feeling really down. You're a great friend, Twilight. It was no big deal, Cole. I'm glad I could make you feel better. She looked up at me with those eyes. Oh god, those eyes. No! I need to get a hold of myself. I can't keep falling for every pony with really, really beautiful eyes and pretty manes and I am thoroughly fucked, aren't I? Cole, are you alright? Twilight asks, snapping me out of it. Oh, yes, sorry about that, Twilight. I got lost in thought for a second there. It happens to me all the time, she said, smiling. Well, Twilight, do you think I should go find Dashy? I don't want her feeling bad for me. That would only make me feel worse. She'll be fine, Cole. She's a really tough pony. But I have to ask, why do you call her Dashy? The only other pony I've ever heard call her that is our friend Pinky. I spend the next few minutes telling Twilight about how I arrived and what happened between Dash and I. She seemed to get a clear understanding of the situation after I was done explaining. So she just kind of accepted me. I've been calling her Dashy since. That's really sweet. Well, anyway, Cole, I need to go pick up my assistant Spike from another one of our friends. Whenever he gets free time, he always spends it with our friend Rarity. He has developed a bit of a thing for her. That's pretty cute. Does this rarity feel the same way? I am such a jerk. No, she doesn't. I don't even think she knows, though. She has a cult friend who takes up all of her attention. When Spike found out, he took it pretty hard, but he still wants to be close to her. I just about lost my shit right then and there. Ponies and relationships? If this world turns out to be a clopfic writer's wet dream, I'm gonna punch something so hard. I don't even know what, but... Something is going to get broken. That's really sad. I hope he is taking it better now, though. He is. I think his love for her is more platonic in nature, though. He is still a baby, after all. What? 
He's old enough for these kind of feelings, but is still a baby? You and I both know I'm not gonna drop this act, alright? So don't even moan about this shit. That was in parentheses. Well, he is a baby for dragon standards. They live a very long time. Oh, I see. Twilight, there's some stuff I'm kind of curious about. They're sort of about personal in nature, but they aren't all about you specifically. But more, po more about ponies in general. Would you be willing to answer a few? Well, I doubt you would ask anything inappropriate, so I don't mi think I mind. I hope our definitions of inappropriate are the same. Okay, Twilight, how old are you and your friends? Oh, well, I'm 13. Rainbow Dash, Applejack, and Fluttershy are 14. Pink of Eye just turned 13 not too long ago. And Rarity is 15. Seriously? I knew that you girls were young, but not that young. Is that a problem, Cole? Thinking back to your story, you must be 19 or 20 at this point. A fair amount older than the rest of us. I'm 20, yes, but what surprises me about your age is just how mature you girls are. Your girls don't still live with your parents, you already have jobs and take care of yourselves. It is just really weird at that age. All ponies are like this, Cole. It is pretty uncommon for a filly or colt to stay with their parents past 12. That is when we are mature enough to take care of ourselves. What's it like in your world? Where I'm from, the legal age for a child to leave home is 18. The parents could get in a lot of trouble if they let their child leave before then, and they got into trouble. 18? That is so old, though. I don't think our species mature at the same rate, Twilight. Not that there is anything wrong with it, it's just weird as all. That's really interesting, Cole. I'll have to write that down. In fact, I should be writing most of this down. Twilight levitates a roll of parchment and a quill from her desk and starts telekinetically writing at a very fast rate. I debate with myself for a moment if I should act surprised by this or not. May as well. I'm not dropping this charade until it, they really trust me or until I get caught. Whoa, Twilight, how are you doing that? Doing what? You mean my magic? All unicorns can do at least this much. Don't you have magic where you're from? No, we don't. And not that I wouldn't like to keep talking, but aren't you forgetting something? Or should I say some dragon? Oh my gosh, you're right, I'm late. I'll be back soon, Cole. Please wait here. Twilight rushes out of the library with enough speed that would make Dash look twice. I laugh a little to myself before inspecting the library more closely. I see all sorts of books. Books on history, fantasy books, how-to books, books on how to write books, you name it. And Twilight probably has it. I decide to grab a history book and take a seat on the floor enjoying the peace. I'm sure Twilight will be back soon. May as well enjoy it while I can. Author's note. The next chapter will be switching to the third person narrative style. It is a pretty different compared to everything prior and hopefully everyone should be able to follow it easily enough. Also, I need to ask any readers out there a quick question. I have serious reservations with using asterisks to portray sounds or actions like gasp. When this story was just being written for my own enjoyment, I didn't care about using them that way. For something like this, however, how do readers feel about them? Yay or nay? Like a horse, you get it? <laughs> Uh, I should put it out there that I'm Troy. I'm reading chapters today. No one cares, pussy! <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say something else. Oh, right. He never actually really changes up the writing style. It stays shitty and inconsistent throughout the entire book. So, don't actually even listen to the author's notes. Anyway! Chapter, chapter five, things get fabulous. Dash closed the library door behind her and quickly made her way to Sugar Cube Corner. She couldn't stay in there. She was not expecting to have so much drama today. Right now, she just needs some cheering up and who is better than Pinkie Pie in that regard? Dash makes it to Sugar Cube Corner in just a few minutes and forces herself to calm down a little before entering. Dash opened the front door, setting out the little door chime. Hello? Are you here, Pinkie? Mr. Cake poked his head out from around the back room and called out, oh, Hello, Rainbow Dash. Looking for Pinky? She is up in her room. Thanks, Mr. Cake. Dash ascended the stairs up to Pinky's room before stopping at her bedroom door. Okay, calm down, Dash. You just need a little cheering up. You don't want to upset Pinky. What? 
Why are you cheering up, Dashy? Did something really, really super ultraly megaly sad happen? Pinky exclaimed, coming very literally out of nowhere. Thankfully, Dash was used to Pinky when she got like this and quickly recovered from the bombardment of questions. Hi, Pinky. Yeah, something pretty sad happened. It isn't anything too serious, but I had to get away. I was kind of hoping we could hang out a bit to help take my mind off things. Ooh, I would love that, Dashy. I know. Let's go prank the flower triplets. They've been grumpy goose all day. <laughs> that sounds awesome, Pinky. Twilight ran all the way to Carousel Boutique and, in her fear of being late, burst through the front door. Wah! Twilight, you dear, you scared the heavens out of me. Rarity screams. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rarity. I just don't like to be late. Twilight was gasping heavily. Dear, it isn't that big of a deal. Spike is always such the gentle dragon when he is here. He is with Sweetie Belle in her bedroom. The poor dear was so tired, I think he may have fallen asleep. He was a great help today. Twilight, after finally catching her breath, chuckles a little bit at hearing this. That is very comforting to hear, Rarity. I'll go get him out of your mane. Twilight tries to swell as the the Spike? Twilight off as she sees a sight that makes her heart fill with aww. Spike and Sweetie Belle are both fast asleep on the floor, nuzzled up next to each other. Twilight thought they were so cute that she almost couldn't bring herself to split up the two. But Cole was waiting back at the library and she didn't want to be long. Twilight, darling, why are you just stint? Rarity looks inside the room and sees the two asleep. She looks at Twilight and they both share a small chuckle. Rarity levitates Sweetie Belle into bed and Twilight levitates Spike onto her back. Thanks again, Rarity, Twilight exclaims, forgetting that there are two sleeping children in the room. No problem at all, darling. That little sight earlier was more than enough thanks for today. Such adorable children. I only hope when I have fools they'll be as cute as these two. Rarity nuzzles Sweetie Belle gently in her sleep. You're already giving thoughts to fools, Rarity. Are you that serious with the mysterious cold friend of yours? Oh, no, 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 dear. Good heavens, no. He's a wonderful stallion, but we aren't ready for such things. I was merely making an observation. Heh <laughs> Okay, Rarity. I was just surprised by the statement is all. Oh! How could I forget? Rarity, I need to tell you something. Is something the matter, Twilight? You look like you're troubled. No, Rarity, nothing's the matter, but, well, let's just say there's going to be a big change to Ponyville soon. Whatever do you mean, dear? Do you remember that spell I cast last night? The one that was supposed to bring an object from another world? Yes, Twilight, I remember it. Well, it worked. There is, however, one teensy, tiny, itty bitty problem. Well, don't leave me in suspense, darling. What is it? The object I summoned wasn't an object at all. It was a living, sentient creature called a human from that world. Rarity nearly fainted on the spot. Twilight, darling, are you alright? It isn't dangerous, is it? Oh my goodness, dear, that is so terrifying. Twilight raised her hoof up to calm Rarity down a little so she could speak. I'm fine, Rarity. And no, he isn't dangerous. He just seems like a very nice human. I think he's the only one I know, so I can't compare him much. He, darling? Rarity put on a devilish grin. So you were alone with a man in your library? Twilight, do I need to tell Pinky about this so we may have a party for the new couple? Rarity giggled at her own antics. <laughs> Twilight blushed profusely before getting out. No, no, no. It isn't like that, Rarity. I don't think he would even find us attractive. He is really different. I'm telling you this because he wants to stay in Ponyville, and you will surely be meeting him soon. He wishes to stay? He doesn't want to go home? It's a long story, Rarity. But it is best saved for another time. I need to get Spike home and into bed before it gets too late. And also get back to this cold of yours. Hmm. Twilight just shot her in an unamused look, which only made Rarity laugh harder as Twilight was leaving the boutique. Jeez! When is Twilight getting back here? I am so bored. <laughs> oh, sweetie Belle, I'm always going to thank you when I say that. I droned out. Twilight had only been gone 20 minutes, but after all the excitement of the day, I just couldn't calm down. 
I had already looked at a couple of books. It isn't like I'm a fast reader or anything, it's just that the books I had picked up were unusually short. They were informative, yes, but short all the same. I was never much for reading anyways. The only time I enjoyed reading was when I, when a chapter to a fan fiction I followed came out. I wasn't too picky about those, so I always had something to read. My favorites being human and equestria stories. And if there was a romance tag, that didn't hurt either. Fun fact time! When I got bored, I liked to talk to myself. A lot. I start singing the song, I Might Be a Brony Now. It was kind of my go-to song for anything pony related. I sang the song a couple times before I decided to look out the window. It was the most amazing sight I had ever seen. There were ponies of all colors and shades going about their business. I was hoping I could catch a glimpse of a few of the more popular background ponies like Ditsy do, but no such luck. I really just wanted to go out there and mingle, but I knew Twilight would get pissed if I did. I'm not sure how I knew that, it just felt that way. Man, I hope that girl gets back soon. Wait, what am I expecting to happen? I guess I just want to talk some more. I don't know. I kept going on and on about whatever came to my mind for what felt like hours. Been in Equestria for nearly one day, and already reverting to my old habits. This can't end well. Twilight with Spike on her back slowly trotted up to her treehouse. She was about to open the front door when she heard all of this talking going on inside. She couldn't understand what was being said, but it was definitely cool. Who is talking to? She asked no pony in particular. She slowly opened the door and as slightly as she could closed it behind her. Cole apparently didn't hear anything because he was still off his own little world. Twilight got a little bit closer and finally was able to hear what Cole was saying. And then what? They are ponies, Cole. S innocent, sweet little ponies. There is no way in either of our worlds you're going to find a pony to love you as anything more than a friend. And even if you did, should you still pursue it? Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons here. Con, you're a different species and having children may be impossible. Pro, you can always adopt. Con, the child could be picked on for having such a weird parent. That basically applies to any mares I may find, too. <sighs> I am such a little bitch when it comes to this shit. Twilight was shocked to hear Cole talk like this way. She had never heard swearing used so easily or being directed at, one one's at oneself. She didn't like it, but she just had to hear more. Jeez, Cole, get a grip. You're in a world full of the most awesome creatures imaginable. They are beautiful, kind, sweet, smart, loving, generous, fun, and for whatever reason they seem to trust you. Ah! Do I even deserve this trash? I'm probably the most evil thing this world has ever seen. It isn't like I would ever hurt any pony. I mean, how could anyone ever do that? I would never be able to forgive myself, but... It is still in my human nature to basically be a complete and total dick to anything that moves. Sigh. No, it isn't. I'm just being a fool again. Cole collapses on the floor, holding his face in his hands. This would be so much easier if I weren't attracted to these ponies. At that statement, Twilight's heart skipped a beat. But how can I not be... I know I told Dashy and Fluttershy that I found them attractive, but there's so much more to it than that. Twilight is just as attractive too. They are shaped differently, sure, but every time I'm with them, all I can think about is how happy they make me. Twilight's face was far past flushed at this point. She was at a loss for words. She desperately wanted to leave, but she didn't want to hear all of this. But a part of her did, and there was no going back now. It would also be easier if they wore clothes. I swear, I've been staring at more ass here in one day than I ever did back home. Maybe I should just get myself gelded. Twilight had to fight every urge not to jump out and scream at him for saying something so stupid. Nah, that is a dumb idea, but it is easier than the alternative. <sighs> I best just put it out of my mind for now. Hopefully I can get a decent job and a place of my own to stay. Then if I ever get too troubled by all these sexy ponies, I can get it taken care of in a few minutes. 
Twilight was in shock. She had never heard any pony say such things. It wasn't just normal to them, and here was this creature basically rocking all of her preconceived notions of him. She didn't know whether to be flattered or scared that he may do something. Well, I feel better now. Getting all that out of my system really does the trick. I'm glad nobody or er, no pony heard all that, though. They would probably freak out. Ha 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 ha! Twilight couldn't wait anymore. She needed to lay down for a while. She backed up slowly, and after a couple of sighs and inner pep talks, she opened the door and then closed it with a solid thud. Author's note. If you guys haven't heard, I Might Be a Brony Now by Edge of Everfree, then check it out. I had something manly in the eye the first time I heard it. He's talking about uh, crying because he's a pussy bitch. Chapter, chapter 6. Awkwardness is awkward. Author's note. I'm a very huggy kind of guy in real life, especially when I get emotional. I've given Cole that same trait. Just saying. You can't hear it, but I'm winking. Um, hmm. Oh, hey, Twilight, you're back. Twilight was having a hard time looking at Cole. She just acted like she was really tired. She didn't have to act too hard. Hi, Cole. Sorry that took so long. I had to walk back slowly so I didn't wake up Spike. She said matter-of-factly, nodding towards the sleeping dragon on her back. So, that is Spike, huh? He's a really cute guy, I have to admit. He really doesn't look all that much like a baby, though. He looks like he would be seven or eight, if I had to guess. Wow, Cole, that is rather impressive. I hatched him when I was five, so yes, he is eight. Wait, you hatched him? Twilight, I'm sure there's a story behind that, but the way you put it sounds really odd. Do I just love messing with these ponies or what? I hatched him with my magic. I don't know how long he was an egg, but I've had the little guy most of my life. I call him my assistant, but he is more like my little brother than anything. Twilight levitated Spike into his little basket bed and planted a small peck on his forehead. I couldn't see Spike, but I'm sure even in his sleep he had a huge grin on his face. That's really sweet, Twilight. I wish I had a big sister like you when I was his age. Do you not have any siblings, Cole? Oh, no. I have two brothers and two sisters. I'm the fourth child of five. There's a ten-year gap between myself and my younger older brother. So basically, growing up, all of my siblings were long gone, with the exception of my little sister. We never got along, though. There was a two and one half year difference between us, so when I was younger and didn't really want a little sister because girls were gross, <laughs> I couldn't really appreciate it. As I got older, though, I became more open to the idea, but she changed for the worst. She got a really bad attitude and basically did everything she could to make my parents' lives a living hell. So I basically never considered her more than blood. She's still my little sister, and I love her for that, but I sure as heck don't like her. As for my older siblings, they've all made really poor decisions in life, but I think they're good people now. They all have been married and divorced and then remarried, and they all have children. There isn't really any time in their lives for a stupid little brother who still lives with the Folkies, you know? Not to be mean, Cole, but if you keep telling me stories like that, I won't be able to talk to you anymore. Don't you have a single story you can share where anything good happens? Twilight cried out as she hid her face from him. Oh, I'm sorry, Twilight. I didn't mean to upset you. Please don't be sad. I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if I made you sad. You and Dashie and Fluttershy, you're all the best things that could have ever happened to me. I, I mean, I couldn't ask for better friends. And, um, Twilight, there's something I need to say to you. Something I should have said earlier. Twilight didn't want to hear it. She was so scared that he was going to tell her his feelings about her. She didn't hate Cole, but she had just met him and didn't want that kind of relationship. She also didn't want to hurt someone who seemed to have hurt enough as it is. She just slowly looked at him with fear in her eyes. Twilight, I, I, I appreciate you bringing me here. I know our time together has been short, and I've basically did nothing but bum the life out of you, but all of you have been made me so happy. Thank you, Twilight. I sincerely thank you for bringing me here. I will do anything and everything I can possibly do to repay this kindness. I know it wasn't on purpose, but that doesn't matter. All that matters is that you still did, and I owe my life to you. Cole was starting to work himself into a fit with all the emotion he was pouring out. There's simply no getting over everything that has happened to him today easily. C -c -c Cole, you don't owe me anything. Twilight was backpedaling a bit. 
Cole was moving closer to her with almost every word. But I do, Twilight. I believe you summoned me right before I was hit by that truck on my way home. If you hadn't summoned me, I would be nothing more than a stain on the ground. Twilight didn't know what to say. Cole was looking at her with the most piercing eyes. It was like he was looking into her very soul. She wanted to look away, but she couldn't. Cole kneeled down in front of Twilight, and for the second time today, he put his hands upon her. He didn't bring her into a hug this time, but put his hands upon her cheeks and made her look him, him squarely in the eyes. They were an inch apart at best. Twilight was scared. She couldn't feel any strength in her body. It was like those eyes sucked out all her will to do anything. As she could, All she could do was stare at Cole as he got slowly closer and closer. Cole rested his forehead upon Twilight's eye. Yes, he did avoid the horn. Just, just, ow! Parentheses. As he let out a contented sigh and said, Thank you so much, Twilight. I know I'm weird to you. I know my actions are probably strange. But you and the others mean the world to me, Twilight. No, more than that. I just want you to know that whenever you may need me, I'm going to be there for you. Cole rubbed Twilight's cheeks a little before backing up and letting go. I'm sure you could use a good break from all this drama, Twilight. I'm going to head back to the forest tree line and find a nice tree to sleep in. Twilight was still in a small state of shock. She was both relieved and almost pleased at the way the situation ended. However, Cole's statement brought her out of her days and she knew she had to say something. Cole, did... You don't have to leave. I'm not mad at you or anything. It's just an awful lot to take in. I don't want you sleeping outside in the cold. You can stay in here if you want. You can sleep in my bed and I will sleep on the couch. I'm sure you're a lot more tired than you're putting on. Thank you, Twilight. I, I, I'll take you up on half of your offer. I'll take the couch and you sleep in your own bed. I won't accept any other deal. Besides, I'm probably way too big for your bed. Heck, I'm too big for the couch, but I can't sleep on the floor. I can sleep on the floor. In all honesty, Twilight, it wouldn't be the first time I have, so you don't need to worry about me. Are you sure, Cole? I don't want you feeling like I, that we don't care about you. Ooh, man. Twilight, that is so unbelievably sweet. Ah! <laughs> this statement caught Twilight completely off guard. She tensed up all over again. Sorry about that, Twilight. It's just that you girls are so unbelievably awesome and nice, and I'm not used to it. It means a lot to me hearing you say that, Twilight. Thank you. But I insist on sleeping down here. Speaking of, which you are definitely right when you say I'm tired. This has been the longest but most fulfilling day of my life. As much as I don't want it to end, I'm basically half asleep already. I'm going to follow Spike's lead and get some shut-eye. Twilight calmed down immensely and gave Cole a small smile. Happy to, Cole. You have a good sleep and tomorrow we can get some more stuff worked out. I'm sure you don't want to be sleeping on my floor every night. You too, Twilight. And I could probably get used to it if it meant I got to talk with you more. <sighs> Sleep tight, Twilight. Cole heads to the side of a bookcase and stretches out underneath it, finally calming down for the day. Twilight, on the other hoof, had another blush attack from Cole's comment. She really wished he would stop handing, hoofing, out these compliments. It definitely made her feel pretty weird. It was late, though, and she was tired. She thought about writing the princess about Cole, but she decided sleep was more important for once. She climbed into her bed and dr quickly drifted off into a sweet slumber. <sighs> oh man, that was not a comfortable night. Feels like I slept on my leg wrong or something. Cole got up and looked around the library for a few minutes. Guess I'm the first one up. I wonder if there is anything I can do. Hmm, in fan fiction, the first morning usually consists of the human making breakfast, but I can't cook to save my life. Hmm. Cole didn't hear the pitter-patter of reptilian feet against the floor. Scalish. Nor was he prepared for what happened next. What are you? Are you here to rob us? I won't let you. Ah! Spike jumped on Cole's back, trying to bite and claw at him desperately. Whoa, 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 Spike. Calm the hell down, man. Cole yelled, trying to get the little dragon off his back. You can talk? Spike asked, jumping to the floor and staring intently at Cole. Yes, I can, Spike, and I'm not a thief. I'm not here to hurt anyone, either. Did Twilight tell you about the sp her spell to summon an object from another world the other night? Hmm, yeah, I kind of remember something like that. 
Well, she accidentally summoned me instead of just some object. I have decided to stay in Ponyville, and Twilight was kind enough to offer me a place to sleep for the night. Don't ask why I want to stay. It's a long story, and I haven't eaten anything in... Oh, God. It has to be have been nearly 40 hours now. Whoa, dude. How are you still alive? I won't be able to move if I went that long without food. I'm sorry for attacking you, bro. We cool? Spike raised his fist, asking for a fist bump. Cole returned the jester. No worries, man. Honestly, it does my heart good to see you attack something literally several times your size to protect Twilight. I just wish it hadn't been me. Oh, yeah, heh. <laughs> Twilight is really important to me. I would do anything for her. She's like my big sister, you know? Yeah, I can understand that. Anyway, I hate to be a bother, but is there any way I could get some breakfast and then maybe do some chores or something to pay for it? Hey, Cole, you don't need to pay for it. A free meal is the least I can do after attacking you like that. Besides, I'm sure Twilight wouldn't want our guest to feel like a burden. Thanks, Spike. You're a good guy, you know that? Thanks, Cole. You too. So anyway, what are you and what can you eat? Oh, well, I'm a human, and we are omnivores, so we basically eat anything that technically counts as food. I should not have said that. Whoa, you eat meat? Yeah, I think I'm trying to eat meat. Yeah, I do, but don't worry. I don't eat ponies or anything sentient. I also don't have to eat meat in order to live, but I won't lie to you, Smike. I'm gonna <laughs> miss it. Since I know ponies are herbivores, I'm, I'll be foregoing meat from now on in order to prevent any unpleasant situations. Wow, that's really nice of you. I don't think I could give up eating something I really enjoy just to try and make others feel better like that. No offense, buddy, but aren't you a dragon? Don't dragons eat meat? We don't have to. I've never had it, so I don't miss it or anything. Cool, cool. So what do y'all have on tap? On what? What do you have to meet? I mean... Oh, well, we have hay, oats, barley, alfalfa. I have some gemstones. I hate to interrupt you, buddy, but do you have anything that isn't basically grass? And you eat gemstones? Man, that has to get really expensive. Oh, it isn't that bad. There's a gem mine outside of Ponyville a ways. I go there sometimes to find a snack. It's usually pretty safe, unless diamond dogs show up. Diamond dogs? I think I'm getting good at this. Yeah, they're kind of like you and how they walk on two legs, but they aren't very smart. Plus, they're really mean. They kidnapped a friend of mine once, and we had to go save her. Turns out she didn't need saving after all. She was so awesome, she took care of all those dogs by herself. Cole laughed a little, thinking back to that episode. He enjoyed it because it gave Spike and Rarity a bit of character development, and it gave Rarity one of the best lines ever. I'm not whining, I am complaining! And you all know the rest. That friend of yours wouldn't happen to be a pony named Rarity, would it? Spike looked up at Cole in shock. You know about Rarity? Twilight told me a bit about you yesterday. Your relationship with Rarity came up at one point. Uh, jeez, Twilight. She isn't supposed to know tell anybody about how I feel about Rarity. Jeez, you must think I'm such a loser. Like, how is a pony ever going to love a dragon? Not at all, Spike. Personally, I think you're a pretty brave little guy. I know Rarity has a cult friend, but you put your feelings aside just so you can be close to her. That is the most selfless thing I have ever heard, and you apparently are really young. I've got 12 years on you, buddy, and I couldn't do that. I would be too jealous or depressed. Thanks, man. Isn't that bad, though? Knowing that she is happy is enough, but enough of this talk. Let's get ourselves something to eat. Oh, yeah, you mentioned no grass, hmm? How about fruit? That sounds awesome, Spike. What are our options? Well, we've got some oranges, bananas, some apples, sweet apple acres. Those. I'm such a loud mouth. Whoa, what? Sorry about that. Apples just sound really good right now. No worry, bro. Apples it is. Cole spent the next couple hours listening to Spike tell him about Applejack, Pinkie Pie, and a lot about Rarity. He couldn't help but respect the little guy. He knew who he wanted to be with, but couldn't, and he was taking it in stride. Here's Cole basically torn between every mare he's met. Not that he didn't have feelings for them before. It's just that, after the whole blood and defined body parts thing, all preconceived notions about this world were thrown out of the metaphorical window. 10.13 rolled around and they both finally heard Twilight waking up. She slowly came down the stairs and found them in the kitchen. Morning sleeping beauty, Cole says jokingly. What? Twilight and Spike asked at the same time. Ha 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 ha, don't worry about it. It is a joke from my world. I just can't help myself sometimes. 
It's all cool, bro, Spike said, bumping fists again. I see you two are getting along well. I didn't even think you think about introducing Spike to you, Cole. I'm more sorry about that, guys. I hope you weren't too weirded out, Spike. He took it like a champ, Twilight. Spike shot Cole a pleased grin and went back to munching on another apple. So, Twilight, what's on the agenda for today? Cole asks, hoping she has given it some thought. I haven't really thought about it too much. Shit. What do you want to do, Cole? Well, I want a job, a place of my own. Not that I'm unhappy here. I just don't like weighing others down. I want to get to know the community, and in turn, they'll get to know me. I hope they'll come to accept me as a town member and, God willing, a friend. So I guess I want a lot of things. I think we should tackle introducing you to every pony first. It'll make getting a job easier, which you'll need for a home. But can I ask you something, Cole? Of course. Who is this god you keep mentioning? <laughs> that is a very long and very thoroughly discussed question where I come from. My own beliefs aside, he is simply a very important being that created the universe and all life in it. That is amazing. We have princess here who can do so much, but I can't say that we, they are creators of all life. Does that mean that humans don't, well, um, breed like normal creatures? When I say that he is the creator of all life, I mean the original. He made the first humans who then had children and their children had children and so on and so forth. He doesn't necessarily play a direct hand in each birth. It is a miracle every time, though. But humans are mammals that breed just like other, any other mammal. Not to be too risque, Twilight, but I'm pretty certain that male and female ponies have the same parts as male and female humans. If you know what I mean. Twilight and Spike both looked like they had steam rising from their ears. Their faces were so hot. Please calm down. I'm sorry I keep doing this to you, Twilight. It's just that there isn't any modesty left where I am from. Nobody is embarrassed about anything anymore. So talking about this kind of stuff just doesn't come across as being inappropriate. I'll try hard to remember that ponies and dragons are more sensitive to these topics in the future. Not to mention that Spike's like eight. It's alright, Cole. I'm starting to get used to it. I don't know if that is a good thing, Twilight. Spike chimed in. Spike, you can have the day off. I'm going to show off Cole to every pony. Woo, later, Cole. Bye, Twilight. You know where to find me if you need me. With that, he rushed out the door, making his way towards Rarity's boutique. Twilight and Cole shared a knowing laugh together. <laughs> Twilight then went back upstairs after grabbing an apple to get cleaned up. It was at this point that nature was calling, and Togol's biggest fear was about to come out in the open. Um, Twilight? Yes, Cole? Ponies have normal bathrooms, right? You know, pl plumbing and running water and all that. Of course we do, Cole. We aren't savages. Oh, thank God. Could you point me to one? I need to take care of business. Twilight giggled at the metaphor and pointed into a corridor leading to the bathroom. He stepped inside and was very surprised to see it. It was just like a normal human bathroom. There was a toilet. Yes. A sink, a shower, a mirror, and basically anything you would expect to see in a normal restroom. After overcoming that ordeal of awkwardness, Cole stepped out to find Twilight looking prim and pristine. She had fixed up her mane and was looking well rested. I take it you're all ready to go, Twilight? Yes, I am. I'll be honest, Cole. I'm a little nervous about how every pony is going to react to you. You and me both, Twilight. But it needs to be done if I'm going to live here. Let's just get the hard part over with. Twilight nodded and they made their way outside. It needs to be said now. I'm surprised I've gone this long without mentioning it. Twilight and the other mares are basically a little over three, maybe about four feet tall. Cole is at six foot three inches tall, so he is about, probably about as tall, if not a little taller than Celestia. Therefore, he sticks out like a sore thumb and has to duck underneath most doorways. They step outside and are immediately blinded by the more late morning sun. It is so much brighter than the show makes it seem. It takes Cole a couple of minutes to, for his eyes to adjust after being in Twilight's low-lit library. So how are we going to go about this, Twilight? Should we just walk around and mingle, or would you rather introduce me to some ponies specifically? I want you to meet my friends first. I think you'll like them. I'm sure I will, but that reminds me. Did you happen to see Dashie again last night? No, Cole. I'm afraid I didn't. But again, you don't need to worry. I'm sure she is more than fine by now. We'll probably run into her while we are going about our business. Anyway. Alright, Twilight. 
I trust you. Spike already told me a bit about your other friends. He spoke a lot about Rarity. She sounds really nice. Granted, I don't think she'll like me very much. I'm not big into being overly neat and tidy. And as you know, already know, I can be pretty crude at times. Don't worry about it, Cole. She can be difficult, but she is a good pony. I'm sure she can get over your personality differences. On the other hoof, I think you and Applejack will get along great. She is a no-nonsense kind of pony herself. I'll warn you ahead of time, though. She can be pretty forward at times. What do you mean, forward? Like, she is forward in an adult sense? I'm scared. Or in a not-holding-back-anything-she's-thinking sense. Pick me. The latter. I think she... I don't think she is even interested in romance at the moment. She is far too busy with her farm. That's another thing I already like about her. She sounds like a really down-to-earth, hard-working kind of pony. Who knows? I may be able to convince her to give me a chance at a job on her farm. That isn't a bad idea, Cole. We should probably see her last, then. She is probably very busy working right now. I also need to warn you about Pinkie Pie. No need, Twilight. Spike already gave me a fair warning, and in all honesty, she seems like a doll. What do you mean? A pony that does nothing but try to make others laugh and smile sounds like the sweetest thing anyone or any pony could ever do. Wow, when you put it like that, I see what you mean. I think you're really lucky to have all these wonderful friends in your life, Twilight. If I didn't have you as a friend, I would be insanely jealous. You're doing it again, Cole. I know, I know you mean well, but when you say things like that, I can't help but you get the idea that you mean more than what you're saying. I'm sorry about that, Twilight. But it is, the, it is the truth. I don't feel the need to hide behind a mask here. I feel like as long as I'm not saying anything mean, I can say anything without being judged. I guess it still makes others uncomfortable, though. I don't mind it too much myself, Cole. It is actually pretty nice knowing I can make some pony or, um... Somebody happy. It's just that you lay it on pretty thick, and that could scare new friends. I'll be honest, I was a little put off it when I first met you. Your story made it sound like you would be a recluse and not to find in anything, and yet you were pouring your heart and soul out to Rainbow and I. It's because I trust you, Twilight. You don't seem like the judging type, nor does Dashy, or Fluttershy for that matter. I feel like I can be myself with you girls. Sorry that I put you off when we first met, but I'm glad you're still my friend. Twilight smiled up at me. Warm feelings will be had for hours. Oh, we're going to first person now, according to him. Twilight gave me a little nuzzle on my thigh and just told me not to worry about it, and that she was glad to be my friend. If it were not for the fact that I am suddenly aware of all the ponies looking at me, I would have probably glomped Twilight for some more huggy time. Realizing we were being watched this entire time, Twilight and I looked at each other and silently made our way to anywhere but here. As we were walking, I could have sworn I heard a pro pony scream, THE HORROR! THE HORROR! I would have laughed had I not known that it would really freak out every pony. We came up on what I knew to be Sugar Cube Corner, but I still let Twilight tell me about it. We stepped inside and were immediately greeted with a lot of gasping and shuffling of hooves. There were a few customers browsing and Miss Cake was walk working the counter. Every pony in there just stood in horror as they saw me. Um, hi? I managed to get out with a little wave. Every pony just kind of looked at each other and waved back. Thankfully, Twilight had given some thought as to how to introduce me the easy way. Every pony, you don't need to be scared. This is Cole. He is a human from a different planet that I brought here by accident. He really likes it here and wants to stay. Don't worry, he is completely harmless, and I can say from personal experience, is very friendly. Every pony in there lightened up a bit, but we're still a little apprehensive. I decided I should probably say something. I know I look different, but I can't wait to get to know all of you. I hope you can get past my appearance and get to know me better, because I really do love it here. Ponyville is the nicest place I have ever been seen, and every pony I have met has been more than hospitable. I will gladly do anything any pony wants to earn your trust. With that little speech over, I did a very overdramatized bow. I think every pony lightened up a lot more after hearing that. I spent the next few minutes being introduced to ponies in the store before they went back to their business. I was so happy to be accepted so easily. I can't even describe how wonderful it felt to be a part of a, such a blessed community.
So, Mrs. Cake, have you seen Pinky? I want to formally introduce Cole here to all of my friends. No, dearie. I'm afraid I haven't seen her since she left yesterday evening with Rainbow Dash. She was with Rainbow? Did they happen to say what they were doing? I couldn't stop thinking about Dash. She's such a strong pony most of the time. No, they didn't, dear. But Rainbow Dash looked pretty down when they left. If I was a betting mare, I would say they left to do some pranks. Probably because that's what they always do to cheer up. Thank you, Mrs. Cake. I told you she would be fine, Cole. I'm sure she is feeling like a million bits right now. And I'm done. Thank you. Goodbye. You 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 goodbye.